Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter. Uh, we are also within the span of the three days of national commemoration of Victory in Europe Day 75 years ago. <clears throat> so the uh, liturgy, the service that we're using is not from our usual source of the Book of Common Prayer. If you've come to this service via YouTube direct, welcome. But if you wish to uh, access the words that we're going to be using in this short service, uh, you may wish to shut off YouTube and access the service either through the website of St. Luke's Muller Glass or Christchurch Bestbrook. The same video from uh, on YouTube, you'll hear these words again, uh, is there, uh, but the words of the liturgy will be available. It's not necessary to do so to enter into the act of worship and the spirit, but if you'd like to do that, that's where you'll find the words we're using. A service for the 75th anniversary of Victory in Europe Day. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God has been our refuge and strength present health and times of trouble. Dear friends, we have come together on this day to commemorate the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe when the sounds of war fell silent on this continent. We come together conscious of our need for God's forgiveness for the sin and the desire to dominate others that leads to conflict between people and war between nations. And as we remember the many soldiers, sailors and airmen who gave their lives restraining evil and opposing tyranny, so we also come in thanksgiving for the years of peace that the nations of Europe have enjoyed since the Second World War. We gather joyfully today as those who gathered on Victory Day, glad of each other's company, albeit in proxy, and grateful for the laughter and love that follows times of sadness and loss. But above all things, let us pray that God's will may be done on earth as it is in heaven, as we join our voices together and say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Anne is going to read two passages of scripture for us. Our first reading is from Zechariah 8, verses 3 to 8. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the faithful city and the mountain of the Lord of hosts shall be called the holy mountain. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each with a staff in hand because of their great age. And the streets of the city will be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. Thus says the Lord of hosts, even though it seems impossible to the remnant of this people in these days, should it also seem impossible to me, says the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country and I will bring them to live in Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I shall be their God in faithfulness and righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is 2 Corinthians 5, verses 16 to 21. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. 
So if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you that on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And in response to our uh, readings, uh, we have a responsory prayer based around Psalms 84 and 89. Your salvation is near to those who fear you. That glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. That glory may dwell in our land. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Your salvation is near to those who fear you. That glory may dwell in our land. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We remember Victory in Europe Day. We commemorate the Second World War, not because uh, we promote the idea of warfare, not because we de delight in the idea of conflict or uh, mass killing, uh, not at all warfare is the breakdown of the civilized dealings of good people with each other. Warfare is often, uh, most often actually perpetrated because one set of people wish to uh, deprive another set of people of what is rightfully theirs and deny them their liberty, their freedom to choose and to dominate them or indeed to obliterate them utterly. This was the nature of the Second World War, particularly in its manifestation in uh, <coughs> Europe. Uh, we will uh, commemorate uh, victory in Japan later in the year. It was that desire to obliterate other peoples and sections of society. We commemorate and remember the dread of the Holocaust of six million uh, Jews and more. We commemorate the Holocaust that was visited upon other minority groups, uh, particularly Roma Gypsies, as we remember uh, the gay population was targeted, as we remember uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, Freemasons and others who were targeted by the Third Reich. And we know that possibly, above all other wars that have been fought, the Second World War may most easily come under the heading of just war, a just war fought for good purpose. We, couldn't debate, we can debate that uh, on and on, and I have great admiration for uh, those sections of our society who are pacifists, uh, and uh, those sections of the church uh, who would hold strictly to a pacifist interpretation. Uh, I think we need that prophetic voice in society and in the church. I want us rather to remember those who, because of their altruistic sacrifice, gave everything on our behalf. Altruistic sacrifice. Those who weighed up the danger. Those who weighed up the threat those who looked at the deprivation of liberty and freedom, those who looked at Holocaust, those who looked at the seizure of other people's lands uh, and all that was involved uh, in the conquering of Europe uh, by the Third Reich, those who looked at those things 
and said it is worth my while to go and to serve to serve meaning that I may sacrifice all that I have and all that I am after all we get one bite at this life we get but a few years to breathe in and out and many young men and women weighed that up and said I am prepared to take a stand not just take a stand theoretically but to take a stand with my all with my everything with my life altruistic sacrifice we see altruistic sacrifice in our society today in these days of COVID-19 and we look with admiration and thanksgiving to the young men and women of our uh, National Health Service who walk into hospitals day by day, week after week into difficult and dangerous circumstances, much more dangerous than perhaps they ever anticipated it would be and many have lost their lives many have through their altruistic sacrifice given everything so this is very uh, poignant and pertinent this remembrance today those words from the prophet Zechariah are very very pertinent to us today the promise of God's blessing uh, and a time when the doors will open and the lights will go on. I hadn't given thought about this until I was watching one of the commemorative uh, programs of the BBC the other day. Uh, somebody said, yeah, on this day, 75 years ago, the lights went on again. I thought, I never considered that really. The lights came back on. People had been living in darkness uh, from 1939 to 1945 because of the blackout. We have been indoors for weeks and weeks now and we may be indoors for weeks and weeks to come and there will be restrictions. Rationing went on into the mid-1950s. There may be continued restrictions for some time to come. So be it. Altruistic sacrifice has meant that between 1939 and 1945 for the liberation of Europe, people gave everything and I want to give thanks for that today. People gave their sanity and their future health as well and people just didn't come home and they came from all around the world. We want to commemorate today people who served us, who came to uh, the rescue of uh, our democracy, came to the rescue of our freedom and they came from Fiji, they came from New Zealand and Australia, they came from Assumption and the Falklands, they came from Canada, they came from Dublin, they came from Malinhead, they came from Coleraine, they came from Edinburgh and Cornwall, they came from Hull and Lancashire, they came from everywhere you can think. Look to our National Health Service. And look how many people have come from all over the world to serve our society. And now, through altruistic sacrifice, they are giving their all. And I would ask those business leaders who rightly are deeply concerned, and I do sympathise, I empathise with you at the threat of the loss of your business and the threat of lost jobs that goes along with that and the damage to our economy in the long term as well as in the medium term. Please, when you say, I may go out of business, or we may go out of business, consider this. Might it be worth it to save half a million lives, 10,000 lives, 150 lives, 20 lives? Would it be worth it to save one life? It has been worth it that people laid down their lives between 1939 and 1945 that I could go to school every day. I could live my life in relative freedom and liberty. I can worship as I choose to worship or not worship if I choose not to worship because of that sacrifice. I continue to live and our society will continue to live and function. There may be hardship, let's bite that bullet. There may be difficult times ahead, let's face into it because people have given all for our sake. The great example 
And the greatest example of all, of altruistic sacrifice, is Jesus our Lord, who said, Greater love has no one than this, than he laid down his life for his friends. Jesus laid down his life for us, even when we were far off, even when we were enemies of God's righteousness. Christ died for us. Thanks be to God for his altruistic sacrifice, for his giving of himself, for my liberty and for my soul. Amen. We're going to continue in prayer now. Missing singing hymns, of course, but we're going to continue in prayer. Let us pray. And first of all, we pray and we confess and we express our sorrow for the atrocity of war. For though we have expressed an understanding of the need of that war that we commemorate today, we know that war is destructive is awful and should never be desired by anyone and we express particular sorrow for the wickedness visited upon the minorities of Europe who were purged and murdered in their hundreds of thousands indeed millions Lord we confess the sin of humankind in your mercy hear our prayer we pray that former enemies may be forgiven. We read in the book of the letter of Paul to the Corinthians, we read of the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, help us to forgive and love our enemies as you, as you have forgiven and loved us. May we work ever in the ministry of of reconciliation Lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray that we personally each one of us and communally may be freed from feelings of fear revenge and xenophobia Lord in your mercy hear our prayer and finally that we may give thanks for times of peace and find joy in the company of one another and that's a particularly poignant prayer O Lord as we look forward to spending time together again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter, the collect for today. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you, and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. And we pray for the peace of the world. O God, who would fold both heaven and earth into a single peace, that the design of your great love lighten upon the waste of our wrath and sorrow, and give peace to your church, Peace among nations, peace in our dwellings, and peace in our hearts, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pledge ourselves and you to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage, and comfort others, and support those working for the relief of the needy, and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit. Give us wisdom and courage. Give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. O Lord God, as we remember, teach us the ways of peace. As we treasure memories, teach us to hope. As we give thanks for the sacrifices of the past, help us to make your future in this world until your, com your kingdom come. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle in the hearts of all people the true love of peace and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled 
with the knowledge of thy love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our sovereign lady Queen Elizabeth and all her in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour of your name and the good of your church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, queen and commonwealth, and all people, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.